Hello and welcome to the lesson video for third grade for Friday, April the 31st. This is going to cover lesson 11.8, which will be our final lesson working with area. So um, today we are going to be working with combined rectangles and we are going to use the distributive property to help us with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at our unlock the problem. So what they want us to do to start with is to go ahead and draw a model that is four times nine. So I'm only going to have the option of making four rows because we don't have nine um, rows going from top to bottom. So we can't make it um, a vertical rectangle that would look this direction. Um, so uh, go ahead and draw that on your paper. And then we are going to choose what we can break this apart into. I'm gonna use a slightly different color for this part. Um, actually, I should probably use this one. Uh, that way I don't have to take time. So uh, to, to break this up into to a smaller uh, pen. So I'm going to draw my line right here. And I almost made it straight. It's really hard to do that. So actually that part being as straight as it was is pretty nice. So I'm going to have a side length of four plus a side length of five. You get to choose how you want to do it. Um, this is the way that I'm going to choose to do it because I think that um, four and five, especially with the five, um, gives us easier math facts for multiplication if you are still um, practicing that particular part. So my first rectangle, and this is going to be rectangle one, uh, that's not going to work. Let's shrink that down a little bit. We'll make this one number one, and we'll make this one number two. Um, so rectangle number one is going to be one, two, three, four times four, which is 16. And rectangle number two is going to be four times five, which is going to give us 20. And then if I go ahead and add both of those together, I am going to get my final answer in square feet, which would be 36. Also, I mentioned in previous lesson that we would traditionally write it with the abbreviation with feet and square. If you want to do it this way for right now, you can also do that. Um, there will be a point in time that we will probably use the abbreviation and the, the two exponent um, instead of this. But if you guys are wanting to do this, you do have permission to do that as well. So if you want to use the word form. So 36 square feet would be our answer. Let's go ahead and look at our share and show. I'm not going to take the time to do this, um, but I will show you that that's what we're working with today. So I could make my rectangle um, be three by seven for this one and three by three for this one, or I can do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six times three for this rectangle, and then four times three for the other. So you get to choose as long as you are making a straight line that goes all the way through the shape. And sometimes we might have to make more than one. There will be an example um, on our next page. I believe it's number seven. Yeah, number seven. There are going to be three different rectangles. So for this one, I can either go this way or I can go this way. So I'm gonna give you a moment, pause the video if you need to, decide what direction you're gonna break up the shape into, and then let's go ahead and talk through what our uh, multiplication um, problems and answers would be for that. So go ahead and hit play again once you're ready. I am going to make mine uh, go this direction because I will be working with easier math facts. And again, the whole idea of doing this is to make it easier and not have to count each single block. And there will be times that you will see something that looks like this. So you may have a four here and you may have a three here and then you get your height. So you may not get the blocks inside um, and you're gonna have to be able to figure out what to do when we get to that part. Um, if we were doing state testing, uh, you would definitely have to do that. But for right now, we're just practicing with the blocks um, already drawn in. So I'm going to have one rectangle that's going to be two times four. And that's going to give me eight. And my other one is going to be four times three or three times four. And that's going to give me 12. 
And then when I add those together, I get 8 plus 12 to get 20 square units. If you went this way, then you would have one that would be 2 times 3, which is 6, and the other one uh, would be 2 times 7, which would give you 14. All right, number three. So this one, we can go ahead and go this direction. We're not going to get even numbers uh, regardless of how we do this. So if you want to go this direction across the middle, you're going to have a group of two and a group of three, regardless of which uh, row that you put that through. And then if we do it this way, uh, you're going to have a group of four and a group of five. So I am going to choose once I get this back in where it's supposed to be, um, to go this direction, maybe. Get my pen to work here, there we go. So I'm gonna draw my line right through here. And we are going to have one, two, three, four, five times four for this part. And that's going to give us 20. I'm going to write the other one on top. I get 5 times 5, which is 25. And then if I do 20 plus 25, that is going to give me my answer, which is going to be 45. If you did it the other direction, we would be working with 9s. So you'd have 9 times 2, which would be 18. And the other one would be 9 times 3, which is 27. And then we would add this together, and that would give us 45 as well. So I think the way that I chose to do it would be a little bit easier. If you have your facts for 9s down, which hopefully you do by this point, um, then you'll probably be okay with that. Um, but again, the idea with the distributive property is to choose whatever makes it easier for you to be able to complete the problem accurately. So for this one, I'm going to again choose to go this direction. And this is going to give me one, two, three, four, five. And then um, I'm going to have four times five on the other side as well. So I've got four times five which gives me 20 plus 20, and that would give us 40 square units. So now for number seven, this one you get to choose how you want to do it. So again, we could just draw one straight line all the way across here. Here's one of my rectangles, here's one of my rectangles, and then this bottom portion would be a rectangle. Or you can choose to draw a line that goes this way. And then a line that goes this way. We have this part as a middle portion. Um, you could actually do something really wild if I can get this thing to stop zooming out when I um, choose a pen. If you want to get really crazy, you could do something like this. <laughs> I'm not sure why anybody would want to do that, but you have options. So I want you to pause the video Choose an option. I'm not going to give you what the what that third option was. Um, I'll give you either one of uh, drawing a straight line through this way or drawing straight lines through here. We won't worry about the, the other weird uh, ways that we can make rectangles out of this. So go ahead and pause the video when you're ready uh, to continue. Go ahead and hit play. And I would really like for this to stop zooming out when I do that. Um, so here we go. I'm going to choose to draw lines um, directly through this part of the shape. So that means I'm going to have a slightly more difficult um, problem here, potentially. Um, but if I count this up, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, so I would have 2 times 9, which we can do. You can do 9 plus 9 using repeated addition to find the answer. That would give us 18. And then both of these other ones are going to be 2 times 3, which are going to give us 6 each. And then 18 plus 6 plus 6 will give us 30. So if I do it the other way, I would get uh, 4 times 3, which is 12, 4 times 3, which is 12, 
and 3 times 2, which is 6. And so uh, 12 plus 12 would give us 24. 24 plus 6 uh, would also give us 30. So for the homework, I'm asking you to do number 2 um, and number 4. But I would also like you to um, be able to at least understand what the answer for number 5 should be. Um, I don't remember if I circled that part. I don't want you to worry about number six. So if you are watching this, um, I'm going to ask you to do this part. There's no way that I can ask you to show that in a Google form. Um, but if you take a picture of it, I can see it that way. So choose how you'd want to divide it. Um, and actually what I might do is just say, which direction do you think would be easier to divide? Um, and what numbers you could work with. So I want you to try that one and this one. Um, again, the idea being if you go ahead and divide it up, you can find the answer of this part plus the answer to this part. Um, or if we draw a line through here, find the answer of this entire section plus the answer to this. And then one and two on the back um, don't require us to do anything crazy. For this one, you probably don't even need to divide it up into two different parts to do it. This one, number two, you're going to want to. So hopefully that helps for you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in Google Classroom. Um, the idea of doing this takes longer to explain than probably actually doing it does. Um, but I want you to understand because they will give us, and I'll draw an example of that um, on the homework page and I'll talk about that. They will ask us eventually to do things like this where you won't have the blocks and you'll have to figure out how you're going to divide the shape up into different parts using the numbers that they gave you to figure out what the area is. So I'll give you an example of what we're looking for for that um, as we go forward. So um, hope you have a great day and a great weekend. If I don't see you in the homework video, um, I will see you on Monday. So have a great day.